cool. Okay, so um, today, so hello, I am Christine Marie Quigless, and it is so nice to welcome you to day four of the Sunrise Yoga Challenge. Today, we are going to specifically explore restless leg syndrome and sciatica. We're going to look at poses that are going to support these issues. These are big deals. More and more people younger and younger people are suffering from restless leg syndrome. And sciatica is something that tends to haunt us later in life, but there is a way to avoid it, and that is with preventative action. We're going to look at these four poses, building on what we've learned in the past three days, and we're going to consider how we could use them in our day-to-day -day life so that we can take preventative action and treat these problems. The more preventative action you take, the less of a chance where you have to fix what's broken and the greater chance that you will grow out of your weaknesses and challenges rather than be stuck having to constantly treat them and to keep just above it breaking again. So let's get started. Today, we're going to begin with our five Tibetan rituals because we're going to start with a very powerful, and it's when I say powerful, when I'm referring to powerful in yoga, I'm referring to power yoga poses. It's a very rigorous, energetic, and warm pose. It's a pose that needs heat so that we don't strain our muscles. So we'll do the five Tibetan rituals first and a gentle reminder. And if you're watching the replay, don't forget to restate your commitment to this challenge. What is the devotion that's going to pull you through these 30 days? Today's day four. You can change it every day, but um, sometimes when we really stick with something, especially something that we think is difficult, it's very exciting to see where all of our investment of time and energy and discomfort and walking through uh oh, sorry. I never set an alarm, but okay. <laughs> and where all of this, we're walking through the dissonance, walking through the difficulty, walking through that moment right before everything changes, when it seems like it is darkest before the sun rises. What are you getting to the other side of? Write that down. Okay. So. Let's start with our fives. Mm. Shoulders down, two feet are side by side. We're going to spread our arms and let's start tapping, moving clockwise. One, two, three, four, five. Mm. Eyes are closed, getting back to your equilibrium after a little spin, getting into equilibrium with the earth. Okay. Camel. Move to J. And lastly, tabletop. I mean, <laughs> lastly. Second to the last. Okay. Upward facing dog. Let's begin with inhale. Mm. 
the wave rolls over. Okay, so one question that came up was about the sounds I'm making <laughs> when I'm breathing. Um, this is called ujjayi breathing. Ujjayi breathing is what we use when we need to generate heat. It contains the heat because we are only releasing the heat, we're only exhaling through our nose. If you ever wanna cool down quickly, if you want to ex, release, ex, eject, right? Exhaust, release the ho, release the heat. En français, ho is up, higher. Exhaust, release the high heat. Then you ex you release, you breathe out through your mouth. But when you want to conserve the heat that you're building, you breathe through your nose. And ujjayi breathing is when you make the sound of the ocean through your throat. So what you're hearing is actually the sound of the breath moving through this chamber, moving around my chamber, my throat and my nose. All of this is making that. We'll talk more about Ujjayi breathing in another session, but because we need to be warm, I will show you just really quickly with my stomach. Belly expands. Belly contracts. Belly expands. Belly contracts. And as you may have seen, if anybody has, if you've looked at the primer, when we breathe through our belly, our breath is more efficient. We get 75% more oxygen with a lot less effort than when we're breathing up here. And this is why we want to get strong and practice with Ujjayi breathing. And this is why it becomes so loud. It's because it really is holding. It's receiving so much at once. Okay, slight tangent. So now we're back to our poses for restless leg syndrome and sciatica. The first pose that is incredibly useful, and it is the very first one that I learned uh, when it came to sciatica, and I learned it in Bikram yoga. And I remember the teacher saying, if you're dealing with sciatica, you will benefit hugely from this pose. You may not be able to do it yet, but over time, you will be able to do it. And this is called Prasarita Padatanasana. It's very rare that I refer to poses in Sanskrit, but I have to refer to this one in Sanskrit because the other name is just as long. It is standing, wide-legged, folded, standing, wide-legged, bending forward pose. <laughs> a lot of words. Okay, so let's get into it. By now, your legs should feel a little bit warm. If they don't feel warm yet, I'm also going to have us do very quickly some goddess poses. So goddess pose is when you have your legs pointing out and you are seated. This is a wonderful preparation for warrior two because warrior two is just one leg and goddess is just doing that front lunge on two legs. So sitting in goddess pose, I remember we had a teacher that would go like this. So you're riding a horse. Um, usually the arms are either two hands facing each other. That's moon god. Two hands facing out. That's sun god. And that's goddess pose. But we're just going to hold this for 13 more seconds to quickly, very quickly warm up. We're not tucking under. We talked about our posture yesterday and how when we don't stand in alignment, just in, in actually like our actual straight, we are not helping the chakras stay in alignment. So again, we're not going to forward, back, uh. Uh, 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 none of that. Okay, let's raise up from there and we will wedge our feet back together. So Prasarita Padatanasana, we're going to bring our feet back out again. But this time what I want you to do is find your natural, the natural um, width, okay? So the way to do that is to simply jump. Just a simple jump. You're not jumping to open them. You're just just a simple casual jump. And when you do that, then you're letting your body show you where your natural flexibility is. When I was a dancer, the teacher, when we were very little, she walked up to us and our legs were parallel. 
and she would, our feet were parallel and she would say, open your feet just naturally. And that's how they established our natural uh, rotation. And that is the same thing. This is your natural width. That's great. You can always make it bigger when you're warmer, but let's start here because narrower is going to be a bit more challenging, but it's gonna be stable, okay? And I have my trusty supports, pillows, and I use pillows because most of us don't have yoga blocks. And so when we use a pillow, we see that we can. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna need it, but I'm gonna show you how to use it because every day our body is different and our body may need different things. So Prasarita Padadanasana. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to really, we're gonna put a strong emphasis on our shoulders pinning down towards our heart. Our hands are on our hips. Our elbows are facing perfectly to the short sides of the mat. And from here, we're going to fold like a flat back. We're going to fold forward. So I need to also show you my feet. My feet are pointing forward right now. And that's because I just did the jump. But I'm going to turn them in because I want to protect my knees. And this is going to help activate that spiral muscular action that grounds us into the earth and creates that bi-directional relationship between us pushing down for stability and the earth pushing back so that we can rise strongly from mildly activated legs rather than broken, uh, super straight legs where no blood can circulate through or overbend. okay? So our hands are on our hips, our shoulders are pinning down. We're going to reach up through our spine and you, should, you might even feel a stretch through the back of the spine and the wings of the shoulders, the shoulder blades. And you're going to think of the head reaching out. And I'm gonna show, you, show this to you sideways. As you move forward, you're gonna hinge forward, flat back. The head is gonna reach out, 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 out. You're gonna pause here. Now this is a great time to think about if you wanna use your bolster. Because then we're going to keep reaching out, 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 out. Remember our feet are pigeoned pigeon toed in, and then we're going to fold forward. And that is the pose. How do you use your bolster? Going to just place your hands. Eventually we're gonna place our hands on the ground and I'll cue that in a minute. But you just place your hands here. You can also bend your legs a little bit, not too much, but just a little bit to get yourself closer to the ground. Or you can use more pillows to get yourself closer to the ground bringing the ground to you, right? So let's fold forward. And now we're going to bring our hands to the ground and we are gonna make sure that our heels are pointing to the short sides of the mat and our toes are pointing towards our hands, which are flat on the mat or on our bolster or on our block. My hands are flat, but what happens when my hands are ever in contact with the ground in yang yoga? They are activated. We are gripping. We are doing the protective grip to protect our wrists and to get some of that bonus preparation, that bonus, these little sips of strength that we're feeding our hands, wrists, and arms, our hands and arms for handstand eventually. And that same squareness that I ask you to preserve when you're doing downward facing dog, this is a chance to do that, to practice it here. The eyes of the elbow are peeking forward. The eyes are peeking forward and past the hands, in the direction of the hands and past the hands. Eventually you wanna to come to a flat back, and from there, you can, you have some options. You can put your hands back on your hips. You can put your hands on the outsides of the feet, or you can even open your feet a little bit if you have the flexibility, if you feel comfortable. And you can actually bring your elbows to kiss under your knees and wrap around the edges, wrap your wrists around the edges of, your, of the outsides of your feet. And that's going to create a bind. 
which is going to give you a deeper stretch. And when you push these elbows into, when you push them and bend them towards the knee where they're wrapping around, you will, it will naturally pull your body towards itself. So you've got a lot, you've got this twist happening by gripping the outsides of the feet, by pinning the shoulders towards the heart, by letting the body hang, pushing your knees towards straight, but keeping a slight bend to keep the blood circulating. We don't wanna break the circulation. We don't want to overextend our legs. That's not living, that's posing. Always breathing, that's yoga breathing. Okay, we'll take two more breaths here. This is our longest pose. This is our most active pose. And the final breath. Okay, so now we're going to unfold just the way we came in. So you're going to unwrap the legs. You're going to wedge the feet together if you happen to wedge them apart, keeping the toes facing the inside of the mat and the heels facing the outside of the mat. Hands are going to be on the hips. We're going to reach our head up and forward to flat back and push into the legs, into the feet to rise, rooting to rise. Okay, so now let's do our next pose. This pose is pigeon pose. Our legs are already pretty warm and we're going to be stretching once again, this, this, the sciatic vein goes from here, goes from here, it starts here, the lower back, here. And it stretches down, 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 down to the back of our heels. And restless leg syndrome happens to be because there's a buildup, a, a um, stoppage of, of movement through this, through these, um, through the muscles, through the veins. And so we want by moving and stretching and then letting them come back to each other, stretch and contract, stretch and contract, we're helping to exercise and move this thing so that the leg doesn't, the body doesn't have to do it naturally while you're sleeping. Okay, so pigeon pose, let's take the first side. We're going to start with the left side and we're going to put our foot so that it faces the long side of the mat and our knee faces the other long side of the mat. And we will first start just very simply. So what you're going to want to do is take a bolster and put it under your hip. Okay. And now this back leg, I haven't told you what to do with that yet. So you're only focusing on the front. Our hands are on either side of the knee. And the back leg, the foot is going to point towards the ceiling. So it's going to turn in. It's going to feel like it's twisting out of its socket, but it's not. And it's just going to turn and it's going to lay passively, not too active there. Just make sure that the palm of the foot faces the sky. And you can hold here. And you, by now, are definitely feeling a little stretch. As the muscle opens up, as the leg starts to open up and relax, because stretch really is relax, not force, you can remove your bolster if you had one and see how that feels. You can sleep your pigeon if you want, hmm. and take the yin child's pose arms where they just lay on either side of your body, palms facing the sky. Two more breaths here. Bring the hands back to either side of your knee slash foot. Um, axis and you're going to push up and let's take the other side. So we're going to bring this leg around and keeping that foot flexed. So this flexing the foot protects the knee. So it's really important. 
keeping that foot flexed, we're going to now take this on the other side. So to get into the pose, I'm going to lift up like this and I'm going to take my bolster and put it under my hips to protect them because they're not ready to stretch so far because it is 6 a.m. Okay, the palm of the foot of my left foot now is facing the sky and I'm wanting to make a right angle with my foot, but maybe I'm not there this morning. You can also bend your foot towards you and the more you bend, the easier the pose is gonna become. Okay, so always breathing. And remember, one side can be different from the other. This side's a bit tighter, so I'm going to support it more. I'm gonna sleep the pigeon, but you're welcome to stay up. More breaths. Okay, hands on either side of the knee foot axis and let's push up like a push up, great. And now we'll go to our third pose. Our third pose is one of my absolute favorite poses, especially for working with people who menstruate. When we can't do inversions like shoulder stand or hand stand or head stand because we're in our first three days of our menses and it's not helpful to what's happening to us because things are going out and by inverting our body, then we're saying, no, don't go. And actually we want them to go. Then we have this alternative called legs up the wall pose. And this is also really great if you have scoliosis. I have a bit of scoliosis, cur curvature, curvature of the spine, which means that, um, and so what I do is I will take a towel and I'll roll it longitudinally lengthwise and I'll lay my spine along the towel and then I'll lay on the towel and just for 20 minutes and do my legs up the wall. Let me tell you what the pose is. Take my legs up the wall. And when I do this, then I can have, I can help gravity do its part. So what you're going to do for legs up the wall, I'm trying to find a wall that I can use. Let me see what's on camera. Great. I think this, this one is. So let me put you here, my darling plant. This one's been with me for years. Okay, for legs up the wall, we're going to put our feet on the wall and we're gonna scoot our bum until it kisses the wall. Kiss, mwah. And then we're going to walk our body down and now our legs are up the wall, literally. And as I was describing, if you're dealing with curvature of the spine or, or dealing with hunching, um, your shoulders are starting to curve over, you can actually reverse the growth by um, working with the pose I, I showed you yesterday for the heart chakra or with legs up the wall with a nice uh, rolled up towel to help push, to help um, let your body and your bones naturally rest using gravity, leveraging gravity to anchor you and encourage your bones to grow towards the ground. When I'm working with clients to help them with um, regulating their cycles, or uh, period pain, then this is one of the assignments, 20 minutes a day. Legs up the wall, letting all that work and energy that you've 
pushed into your lower body, into that root chakra, helping it integrate with the chakras above the belly button, above the heart, like making a mixed drink. When I made a mixed drink, I would always um, put the pulp in first and then the mixer, the soda water in second. And I was working in a restaurant and the waitress who's training me said, no, no, the soda water goes in first. It's easier to, the pulp is thicker, so it will disperse itself and the soda water will um, fill in the holes. It will, it will make it mix more easily. I'd never done that before. And now it's how I always do it. This is the pulp that our upper chakras are the soda water and our lower chakras and all the things that push down into our toes, our ankles, our shins, our knees, they're the pulp. And now you're helping it mix. Okay. Let's go to our final pose. So you're going to walk your body back, getting out of the pose the same way you get into the pose. And we're going to take child's pose, but today we're going to take the yang version of child's pose. I mean, excuse me, the yin version of child's pose. So in contrast to yang, where our knees are pointed towards either long side of the mat and our body is going to float through our knees, in yin child's pose, our knees are, our thighs are together, our knees are together, the palms of our feet are facing the sky. And we're just gonna roll down and over. And now the center of our body is supported and our arms are going to rest. Our shoulders are going to pour over our knees like a waterfall. Like when you put something under a waterfall and it makes that lovely um, arc with the water as it's deflected. Our shoulders are going to pour over our knees and the palms of our hands are going to point towards the sky. Just as important as it is that we stretch and activate our legs so that we can help treat restless leg syndrome and sciatica we must give a converse, a counter pose, and child's pose is that counter pose. What's lovely about Ian is that the less you effort, the more gravity works and the more quickly your body opens up and relaxes and with relaxation comes deeper stretch. Tomorrow is our first yin day. Oh, one more breath. And exhale. Bring the hands to either side of the knees. And you're going to push and give yourself a mini roll up through the spine. So roll up through the spine, which means the head is going to essentially move towards the knees. Feel a slight stretch as you roll up and come to an erect posture. Okay, so today we covered four poses that are going to assist in preventative action or treatment for restless leg syndrome and sciatica. I have worked with several people and when they do this, they no longer have to be on medication. No more trips to the chiropractor. The chiropractor will put you back together again, but if you don't do something to keep your body together, to train your body, to treat itself, 
then you will unravel again and will have to be put back together again. So we want to avoid that. <laughs> um, I hope that you enjoyed this video and I would love to hear, especially if you deal with restless leg syndrome and sciatica, I would love to hear how these poses are making a difference for you. I recommend doing these and taking 10 minutes a day if you can. You can just watch this video over and over and over again. We spend a lot of time in Prasarita Padachanasana and we spend probably two to three minutes in the other poses. Don't forget, because yoga is in holistic practice, don't forget to take time to acknowledge your mission, acknowledge your devotion, acknowledge your challenge. The challenge is coming to the mat, but what can help us get there more quickly is that emotional or intuitive yearning exploration that we are handling by showing up and changing our lives and doing something different every day. So what we do on the mat, we always want to bring off of the mat. And that is why I will always wish you all the things that I get to enjoy on the mat. Joy, ease, space, and grace off of the mat. Thank you for joining me today.